How you going then, Mike? Are you? Ah, I see. He does it every time. You, you... It alerts you to the fact you've been recorded. <laughs> Have you rewound the tape yet? Tape's rewound. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are again at Bryn Derwin Studios. It's a lovely day again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> almost as nice as the one before. Yeah, almost yeah. as nice as when we met yeah. Dave Beringer. <laughs> uh, but now we've got, we're delighted to have David Wrench with us. Um, so uh, when I googled you, David, I, I came, yeah. came up with you as being an artist as much as a recording engineer. I gather you were. A uh, I was. I was for a while. Yeah. Um, I'm getting back into it again now. Are you? Yeah. yeah. But uh, not really done any of my own stuff for about five, six years now. Right. But, um, but that was your way into the industry, was it? It or? was. Yeah. It was doing my own. I felt it was my way into the studio as well, really. With, yeah. Because uh, I recorded my first solo album. Here when it was a tiny, tiny little studio that Laurie was running. I see. Mainly as a hobby, really. So are you from this neck of the woods? I am from Anglesey. So yeah. I, uh, just came to do a little album there, and then rang him up about a year later and asked him if he wanted an engineer, and he happened to want one. Right. And I didn't really. I told him I could engineer, but I, I didn't have a clue what I was doing. <laughs> I spent a bit of time in the studio. I didn't really. You'd seen it done. I'd seen it done, but didn't really know it. <laughs> so he just said, yeah, OK, and threw me in at the deep end with That's the band. So, Brilliant. So it was, uh, yeah. Was so who was the band? Who, which one? It was, some, it was a local band. I can't even remember the name. It was ter some terrible heavy metal band. It was awful. <laughs> and it, they turned up with the biggest drum kit I've yet to see to this day. <laughs> <laughs> just hundreds of toms. Oh, God. <laughs> I, you know, I, I thought... Maybe this isn't the job for me after all. <laughs> but, um, but you stuck at it. I stuck at it, yeah. Then uh, pretty soon some good stuff came along and I started to work out where to put mics and what mics went where. Cause yeah. Just presented with a load of mics and not really knowing anything. Yeah. About you know it was, it was good because it, it meant I had to do a lot of trial and error. And strangely ended up at the same techniques a lot of people use anyway. Right. But just through trial and error, yeah. really, and without. And but it's good because I know now why those techniques are used and. Yeah and got so, to know microphones really well. So pretty sense. much a self-taught engineer then? Yeah, apart from, you know, I'd say that, you know, after, after two or three years of doing it, um, as the studio sort of built up, mm. um, you learn off, the various other producers came came along and yeah. you, you learn a lot of watching other people yes. as to what works and what, you know, and what doesn't work for you and, you know, what you think is a good or bad thing. Yeah. And you, you just done loads and, and realise I mean, mainly about dealing with people, really, and dealing, keeping sort of musicians happy and getting the best out of them. That's the, right. That seems to be the key to it. it. Yeah. Who do you think you learned the most from then during those sessions? Well, the, the two big projects around then that I learned loads from that were sort of really steep learning curves. Was one was with um, a musician called Jackie Leaven, who's yeah. been around for years and years. And just looking, just watching how organised he was in the studio and how planned he was when he went in there. Right. The session really ran like cl clockwork. There was yeah. no, no real... He planned it so meticulously beforehand. It was like a military operation. Right. Was, you know, which involved everybody being on the game and not on the ball and working hard. But it it meant the album got done... A huge amount of work got done really quickly. Yeah. And, and it sounded great. You know, yeah. It sounded really good. He was just very focused on what he wanted and very, very good at communicating in a way that musicians would understand, yeah. not an, an, in a non-technical way, as well. right. it's just explaining um, explaining what the song was about, mm. really getting into musicians' heads what the lyric was about, and making sure that they what they played didn't contradict that or didn't get in the way of the vocal ever, mm. and was, uh, that nothing should ever sort of damage the narrative of a song, oh, right. and, and that, was a, yeah. that was a really big learning thing, and the other was working with uh, Julian Cope for the first time, right? Which is, you know, a completely different kettle of fish <laughs> and a wild <laughs> session, and you know, that, <laughs> that nearly threw me. I just about got through that, and then, but learned a lot from it because he, it was a wild session where we were going till sort of, I don't know, normal, stupid middle of the night hours, and putting rough mixes down about three in the morning, you know, and halfway through each mix, you, I'll oh, turn that up and pan it over, and you know. And that, okay, there's a rough mix. But, you know, I was thinking, oh, don't worry about it too much. Just a rough mix. And it's getting towards the end of the session. So, oh, what are you going to do about mixing these? And you know, she said, oh no, those are the mixes. <laughs> I, I don't mix. I've given up on that. It's a waste of time. <laughs> paranoid. Thing. These things sound terrible. And then the record came out, and I couldn't bring myself to listen to it. And then 
listen to a few years later, that sounds great. Because it, <laughs> it just sounded deranged in like like my favourite sixties records. What, which album was that then? What was that? It was an album, um, Brain Donor, album, which is in a heavy metal band. Right. And you know, you can hear you can hear crackly faders, and <laughs> <laughs> you can hear things panning and things lifting up by about twelve dBs yeah. where they shouldn't. But it just makes it really exciting. Yeah. It, it, you know, it's, it's like a it's like a wild dub mix. Yeah. But, you know, and it, it, it so sounds intentional once it's on there, and it sounds wild and chaotic. Yeah. Remember the time thinking, oh, you know, I'd put some reverb on something or something that or <laughs> balanced it slightly better if I knew it was going to be the final <laughs> thing. But well, that was a big learning curve. Yeah, I suppose it. that would have changed the whole, your whole perception of what you were doing. And yeah, it probably wouldn't did. have been so much fun. No, it wouldn't have been. No, it wouldn't have been. It would have been, uh, and just learning how to cope with a session that really is quite wild and spontaneous. Yeah, which I think threw me because I hadn't come across one like that before. <laughs> But who else was who else was involved in that then? Who was his? Uh, it was band? just it was a guitarist called Doggan and a drummer called Kevlar. Um, I think they both went on to being spiritualised. Oh um, right. Um, and they were great, you know. Really so he, Julian was kind of producing it, was he? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it was you know it was vocals in the in the control room. And stood, yeah. up, stood on the on the work worktop of fifty eight. Right. <laughs> stood on the equipment. Right? Riding the feedback as he's doing it. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. yeah, I just learned to loosen up really on I that see. session and realise not, not to get, you know, if that's, you could just go with the way, an art, if an artist feels really comfortable and wants to go with something like that, you've just got to not get in the way through technical reasons mm. and to just try and capture it as best you can if, that, if that's what's going to get the performance or that's what's going to get the thing across. And so it's so we managed to take into other sessions and, and sort of freedom of working. Yeah. So and also, so presumably the the, the planning and it's, it's the preparation and then the freedom once you're all prepared and planned. Yeah, I, I think that's probably where I'm, I'm happiest. Really, I like I like musicians to sort of know what they sort of know what they're doing, yeah. unless it, unless it's an improvised session, which, yeah. which is a very different thing. Yeah. But generally, if it's an album and you've got songs in it, you know, people should know them. You should have a pretty good idea mm. of where you're going with mm. them. it. It it seems strange that sort of. You know, sometimes very basic structural things aren't sorted out before coming in the studio. Mm. And my studios are expensive. You know, yeah, I think pre-production's you know, massively underrated. Mm. You know, the, the, the more you know, if I'm producing stuff now, I tend to try and spend a fair bit of time doing that. So it's, mm. so it's not a, a big mystery when you come into the studio what you're dealing with. You know. Yeah, you can you can have a lot of it sorted, and it just makes the, the session run a, you know a lot smoother once you start. Absolutely. But then, you know, there's always like elements of chaos in tracks as well, yeah. and, and elements of, <laughs> of the unknown, and sort of elements of experimenting, yeah. just to, you know, create something special there. You know, yeah. that sort of, that there's a lot to said for sort of randomness in music, mm. you know, and capturing things that may be spontaneous. They don't always work, you don't have mm. to use them. Yeah. So are you, are you kind of the default house engineer? Because that's, that's kind of a concept that's gone out the window in the last yeah, like, gen, 20 gen, years. Yeah, but, uh, pretty, pretty much, yeah. 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 Sort of 95% of the stuff. Yeah, comes so through, people book the studio engineer. and then they say, is there an engineer there? Or do they, do yeah. they know about you? Oh, or? It's a mixture of both. The yeah. last few years, I mean, people have, you know, the last few years, it's been a mixture, really, of um, people coming here because they've been recommended and recommended because of myself as well. Mm, mm. And then some people approach me to do something and I'll say, well, we should, you know, it seems daft not to do it here. I know, yeah. I know the place so well. Yeah. So, so do you still live in here, Anglesey? I do, yeah, yeah. I live in Bangor. Yeah. All oh, right. Yeah. I mean, occasionally I'll go and work at the studios, you know, to yeah. sometimes with mixing and things like that. Yeah. Um, some, you know, with some albums now, we'll do the sort of drums and the, the live backing tracks here. Yeah. And, you know, because budgets are so small, they've got yeah. really small to. Or even use, you know, just go with a laptop and a small Pro Tools system and do the overdubs and then come back and mix it or something. Yes. Yeah. You know, so, um, yeah, there's so many different ways of doing it. Yeah. So tell me about Bat for Lashes then, because they've had a bit of success recently. Did you do most of their. I was, I was just sort of engineering and on that really. Um, and just the session here. So yeah. they'd already got quite a lot prepared. And uh -huh. she'd, she'd recorded a lot. Uh, at home myself oh, right. and with um, David Coston. They'd done quite a lot and then came here and did it was sort of drums and then things like violin and strange keyboard sounds. Yeah. And, and a lot of the shoes, there's a lot of quite strange acoustic instruments that Mark Safone. Yes, I saw her with that on Jules um, Holland, yeah. You know, various various instruments like that. So it was it was just sort of basically just getting sort of miking up things like that really. Mm. So 
Okay. Uh, a lot's been done in was being done in Pro Tools with that anyway. So it was the session was sort of well underway. Yeah. And then, you know, quite a lot in vocal. And actually, we did we did do some. There's a couple of tracks which have got sort of live piano and vocal. Right. From the, from the piano. All right. And, uh, we just got in there. And, uh, I also the thing is I also like working with you know on the engineering side. I love recording. And uh, it, it really excites me capturing you know, a really good live sound on mm. a on a band of really great musicians. Mm. And, Capturing that and capturing the atmosphere of it yeah. that really excites me. Have you ever done any recording gigs and things like that? No, I haven't. No, I haven't done any any outside live recording. No, at all. no. I'd like to. I'd, I would like to try mm. that. But it's, I love doing it and getting you know seeing people just relax and get into it and, mm. and knowing you're really capturing something. You know, mm. that, that that does excite me. Be able to hear that hear that back on a record. You know, like mm. a lot of my favourite records. You know, a lot of my favourite records. You can tell they were done like that. Yeah. You get sixth sense after a while as to whether mm. something's been overdubbed to yeah, death, yeah. or whether it's you know, and it's been really, or whether it's natural performance. Yeah, and and you can, you know, a natural performance doesn't have to be sort of mistakes and all. Mm. If you get it right, it can be without them. You know, just a great natural performance, yeah. and you can tell, you can really tell the difference. Mm. I think you can, you can feel that. So in your in your um, teaching yourself how to engineer, mm. is there anything that you've Found that you kind of do differently because of that. I know you said you, you found that a lot of things were similar, but what, is there anything you find you do differently which you think other people don't tend to do, but you like doing? Or I'm not right. entirely sure. I'm not, I'm, not <laughs> so I'm, I'm not entirely sure what other people do. No, I suppose not. <laughs> 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 and well, say so recordproduction.com in Welsh. <laughs> 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 hey.